Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week 14 of Breaking the Fourth Wall. I am your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside special co-host of the week, Edric Fung. Thank you for being on the show, dude. Thanks for having me. No problem. So Edric is going to be here for the next two weeks. You know, like we do every episode, I don't bathe, neither does he. We just stay in our clothes, and, you know, in two weeks we just, you know, whatever. Like, we don't even go home. We'll just stay here. Why not, right? Yeah. It's a comic store. Yeah, it's cheap. Why would you, yeah. There you go. Save gas. <laughs> I'll put cots in the back. You'll be all right, man. Sleep on the table. So anyways, um, so some weird stuff going on this uh, this week, or this past week, we should say. Um, first of all, Facebook, police strike again. There's a new Facebook page that was brought to my attention by my co-host on the Spinner Rack, Brian Adams. Uh, and it's called WTF, Give Ethan Van Skyver His Profile Back. You know, are you familiar with Ethan Van Skyver, the artist for DC Comics? No, he's, he's worked His big work for DC was, uh, he's, he's did Batman, but his really, really big work was Green Lantern. Uh, we're talking about after uh, Jeff Johns actually like brought it out? Jeff, yeah, after that, but for the most part, he drew a lot of what Jeff Johns wrote. Okay. Um, I think there's some of his artwork back there. Yeah, that cover back there with next to the Spider-Man one, the Forever Evil. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that's I, his artwork. Okay, I am a little familiar with it actually, but um, I haven't read it, unfortunately. So he brings my this this page to my attention, and uh, from the description on the page, it says DC Comics artist Ethan Van Skyver was recently targeted for harassment on Facebook. Okay. Someone maliciously reported his profile. Facebook disabled his profile without care, supporting this faceless harassment, caused him to lose scores of personal photos, videos, and uh, contacts. So. I don't know the de- all the details behind this. You know, I don't understand why somebody would report Ethan. Now, um, early, I want to say it was last year, uh, there is a store in Chicago, a comic store in Chicago, who uh, I'm friends with. I'm not going to go ahead and put them on blast right now. But um, they there was some misunderstanding between the store's Facebook page and Ethan's Facebook page. Okay. And it got to the point where it was a slight misunderstanding between them. And it, it turned out the misunderstanding was due to political views, which we all know you don't miss politics with comics. Yeah. Um, the, it got a little ugly because a lot of the fans got involved. Customers at the store got involved. Fans of Ethan Van Skyver got involved. And then next thing you know, they're making death threats. Like, oh, if he comes to Chicago, we're going to kill him. And, you know, and then there's fans say, you know, if we ever go to your store, we're going to set your store on fire. Like, it got really, really bad. So that was the last time I heard anything about Ethan Van Skyver and his Facebook stuff. But now, for some reason, someone reported his page. For what reason, I don't know yet. But um, I find it kind of weird. Like, dude, why would you report his page? What what could have, this man have possibly said on Facebook to have you report your page? Especially with him being in the public profile that he is. You know, like, he's a big artist at DC. Yeah. It's like, I, the guy's not an idiot. I've met Ethan Van Skyver before as a fan and as a member of the show. And... Like the guy knows his shit. So everybody, if it had to do with something political or whatever the case may be, that's his own opinion. Why block the page? You know, it's Facebook. If it was something inappropriate to people, I can understand. But if there was nothing inappropriate and people were just being fanboys or just you know had to be on this public outcry and all this kind of stuff, I really don't know that much about the situation. But from what you're telling me, it should have not gone to the excessive amount that it should right. have, it should have been done. Now you think Facebook is wrong in the fact that they just kind of, you know, okay, you're done with your account as opposed to giving the guy a warning or saying, hey, this is what's going on, correct it over taking your profile from you, you know? There definitely has to be some communication. Oh, because yeah. Because you just can't yank somebody off unless it's so inappropriate that you have no option. Right. That I can understand because yes, now you're totally. going over and they can go over the backlogs of your, you know, PM messages or private messages and they can read all that stuff. Even if you erase it, it's still logged in. They still have that. So without getting those facts, I don't see why you would actually remove somebody unless you had a specific reason that it pissed off the people for a good amount of reason that there would be a public outcry about it. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a reason for that or a reasonable reason that people will get upset. It's like, I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, I guess in my case, uh, Console Wars, for example. You talk about Xbox One, you talk about PS4. People are saying, oh, Xbox One told me this. And then PS4 is saying, we're going to be all for the people. That's not true. Businesses are businesses, and they're going to react the way they are. They're going to tell you what you want to hear, but you got to really listen between the thin, you know, that little line there that says what is correct and what isn't factual. Um, and that's something that a lot of people kind of get away from, is that they see all these rumors, or they go by hearsay, 
and they don't know all the facts, so they just judge to that pure judgment. So I was like, go with the crowd and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what was one of the things I, you know, when I saw this new consoles release, everybody was like, death because of PS4, death because of Xbox One. It's stupid. Enjoy your consoles, just like this person. The guy, you know, is an artist. Mm -hmm. Really good artist. Even though I'm not really familiar with him so much, but he's something that actually should be taken as, this guy is making a living doing this. And for, I don't know if people understand this, as much as they want to think that people do make a lot of money, that's not always the case. And Bill Finger is actually one of those people that can actually mm -hmm. be talked about that he didn't make any kind of profit whatsoever. He died to his grave having to be realized that this guy was a big contribution to Bob Kane's Oh, yeah, of course, of course. And, uh, you know, for fans, if you guys know what's going on with this uh, Ethan Van Skyver Facebook deal, let us know. Hit us up on our page. Let us know what's going on. But um, moving on, how you were saying uh, making a living doing comic books. Yeah. You know, that brings us to, uh, that's a great segue, it brings us to this next one, where Bleeding Cool, you know, some of our favorite people, uh, they report that new that the new DC Comics royalty deal is a bum rap for a lot of the DC creators. Um, and reading directly off their Facebook page, this is what they have to say. It says, uh, and I quote, Some of the figures from DC's new royalty payment plan have started trickling down. I'm sure there's more to come, but under the new DC f uh, payment plan, I'm told from repeated sources that freelance writers will get around 5.4% of net revenue instead of roughly 2% of the cover price. Uh, and while the print and digital numbers are now being combined, I'm told that the unit sales threshold for monthlies before any royalty payments are made is moving from 35,000 print only to 60,000 combined. That's, that's got to suck, man. Um, it says, it's likely given the state of many DC Comics monthlies right now that a number of creators will now no longer see any royalties whatsoever for monthly books when they, like they did before. Take a mid-level book like Aquaman number 30. Uh, I, ICV2 or ICV squared estimated North American sales of 33,000. You can probably add another 5,000 for the UK and maybe another 5,000 for digitals. Now in the past, selling 38,000 copies would have seen royalties pay out. Now, nope. In fact, for DC monthly books, you'll have to get onto their top 10 or you won't make any royalties at all. So while it's nice that colorists are now getting royalties, they join a time when you have to be working on Batman, Batman Eternal, Harley Quinn, or any of the top. Something big. Yeah, to, to, to your books, uh, to get any extra cash for your efforts. Although those who are very, uh, those who are, are do, doing very nicely. Uh, it's all, it also may depend on those unreported digital sales. What's more is that uh, the sales threshold, which has to be met before any payments are made for original graphic novels, is going from one copy to 15,000 copies which really bites. And the threshold for trade paperback or hardcover collections has moved from one to 3,000 copies, which means an instant drop in royalties for many creators. OGNs often take uh, a while to sell and collections have a long tail as well. It will now take even longer before they start paying out. Now, one thing I wanna mention, I follow, or I'm friends with uh, DC, current DC creator, Jimmy Palmati. Um, for those who don't know Jimmy, he is currently writing Along with his wife Amanda Connor, uh, the Harley Quinn ongoing. He worked on All Star Western recently. Um, so I, I, Jimmy's been all around. Jimmy's a great writer. He's worked for Marvel. He helped Joe Quesada with Marvel Knights back in the '90s. Okay. And Jimmy's just Jimmy's been around. Jimmy's you know he's one of the uh, in my opinion, Jimmy is one of the guys that uh, he he's a pillar in the comic community. And one of his recent posts I actually found very interesting was the fact that he was actually sticking up for DC. You know, and he's saying that DC was a great company to work for, and so many people focus on the negative. He focused on the positive of why he's working there. But to go back a step, this article also just said, you know, you've got to be working on one of the top tie, top tier books, like Harley Quinn. He happens to write Harley Quinn. So, would you think Jimmy would have the same opinion if he wasn't in one of those top books? That was a good question because. Um Coming from people that I've talked to, whether in video game industries or comic businesses, toys, you know, um, it's really hard to justify that because when you're the person that's scrounging to make a living, you're going to be pissed. Right. And there's no doubts about that. You're going to have to be bitter about it. Um, Speak up, man, so the people oh, can hear you. <laughs> um, the thing is, is that human nature, if someone's really good-hearted like that, Congratulations. I right. give you all the credit due. But 
otherwise, um, you're going to be bitter about if you were put in that situation and you're not looked at as this high profile person or triple A person. And that is also hurts confidence of people wanting to innovate. Mm -hmm. This is another issue is that we don't see, you, you see innovation, but you don't see it get pushed as it would be back in the 80s or 90s. Even 2000s, early, uh, it, it was pushed, and then all of a sudden it kind of just stopped. And then it's like, we gotta go back to this retroness, which in some ways it did need to happen, but in other ways it also complicated things because now everybody's trying to do, you know, back to the past or go over old uh, licenses and all that, that should be renewed and some that just, I don't see a reason why. Right. I mean, like I said, I, I've, I've met Jimmy, he's on my Facebook, so I see his constant posts. You can tell the kind of person somebody is. Um, Jimmy was actually one of the first people to give comic streamers that interview at our first, the first time we went to a con as a, as a group. Um, so that was really cool. And I, I like Jimmy. Um, you know, and I wish him and everybody else at DC, regardless of what title they're working on, whether it's high profile, mid-level, or even one of the lower selling books, you know, I, people got to eat. And it's already hard enough that you are in the comic industry and you're not getting paid, you know, a lot of, you, you see a lot of artists, they're struggling, man. Everybody's you struggling, know? whether it's, you know, artists for both, you know, comics. Or music or whatever. I mean, it's kind of to a point that, I don't know if a lot of people see this in the world, but even though there are job openings that were better, but these ones that were really top of the line that was going to make it up, they're starting to scale down because they're like, why do we need this if we can do everything with digital? Or why do we need this if we can do stuff like this? Mm -hmm. And then it, it takes away the, uh, the naturalness of what makes everything come together just like it would give that nice feeling like when you have a figure it doesn't feel like it's a knockoff or anything it feels authentic because you buy something authentic <laughs> well said but like i said i wish everybody at dc the best you know um hey if for some reason it doesn't work i say hit the independent scene man image image is a great place to get your ideas off the ground and i know a lot of these creators both writers and artists have so much stuff that they want to go but due to the restrictions of like the bigger companies yeah. dealing with copyrighted characters you got to stay in within certain you know but this is the best time stuff. but definitely the best time to be innovative oh of Take course a chance totally as much as i would say that you know to people that you know if you're really hurting for money it is always prostitution <laughs> I'm just well, saying. No, if you want to go over to the uh, certain parts of uh, well, Chicago, you just said, <laughs> hey, you just said if you're really hurting for money, there's prostitution, you can sell some <laughs> blood, sell some sperm, be the next, uh, what's his name? Trust Fucking me, you know what? That's Matthew Vaughn. What was that movie he made? Delivery Man? I am. We had like 90 kids or some shit like that. I because he like he was hitting the sperm bank every other day or something. Boy, I'm gonna have to tell and my then, girlfriend uh, I'm gonna have to ask her about this movie because honestly, he this finds is how much out I'm he's not got in. like a million kids or something. Oh dear. Yeah. That's bad. <laughs> it is what it is. That's, that's, what, that's what this show has come to. Talking about Matthew Vaughn fathering a bunch of kids. <laughs> mm, right. All right then. Um, and then closing the show, we're going to make this a quick uh, argument here. Uh, about a week and a half ago now, Transformers 4, Age of Extinction hit theaters. You said you still have not watched it. I have not. I watched it opening night. Um, I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I didn't think it was better than the third one. I loved the third one. It was just pure action all the way through. Um, this movie was good, but it, it took a lot darker tone. Yeah. Um, even the Autobots were a lot darker. I was telling people, asked me, like, oh, I still love Bumblebee. Well, the way I would compare Bumblebee is the first three movies, he was that your kid brother, whereas in Age of Extinction, he's that rebellious teen. Um, no mention of Sam Witwicky or any of the human cast before. The only thing that ties into the previous movies was the whole uh, the war in Chicago. But uh, I've been seeing a lot this past week online. G1 versus the Bayformers, as they're being called. Um, what's your take on this whole thing, man? Like, how do you feel about, you know, do you think Michael Bay, you know, fucked your childhood, as they say? Or do you think it's just like, you know, well, you got to understand this is this, this, and this. Like, what's your take, dude? My take is since I'm old school, as I would call myself in this case, I guess this is what you're going to place me as because... One of the things is is that when Bay created and Spielberg allowed the CGI to be done for the Transformers, the first one I was actually happy with is when the second and the third one that the stories were starting to lose this way. Well, nobody likes the second one, so it's like everybody's in agreement there. So, you got your die hard. I mean, like you cut my arm and I bleed. Energon fans, they're the ones that are like, oh, part two was you know they were all great. And in a sense, in a way, I like them all, but part two was absolutely the weakest. Yeah. 
I, I will admit to that. Um, my thing is, is that how I perceive things is that I don't feel emotional, not whatsoever about these movies. And the thing was, is that I remember from the old classic 1985 film, is I got emotional because when Optimus died, I kid you not, when I was a kid, I cried. A lot of people did. And that's something that I take passion as. I want to see a Transformers that has a little bit more deep than just action, that there is a story base. Like when the comics came back out to revise the whole Transformers up, if they returned, what would you do and everything? Mm -hmm. How would they act? So Megatron is here thinking that he, like in the fourth that we were talking about, um, that he's kind of this drone, but really, he was aware of the whole time. Right. And I like that idea that he was being, he, they thought they were playing with him, but it was like, I was playing with you the whole time. Right. And I like that twist because it was darker. It was something that there was an after effect, especially to um, the main character, uh, Sam. Mm -hmm. I think that was the original. Uh, In the original, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. In the cartoons. And he no, was. In the cartoons, he was Spike. Spike, sorry. I'm trying to think. I'm like, it starts with an S, but I can't remember. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of the things I liked about it is that you saw him grow up and you saw this big difference from what you saw from the 80s cartoon versus what you're seeing there is like, we need to adapt. We need to adapt to things that are happening now. Right. What can we do with that? And that was good. And I liked that. Base first uh, Transformer was that kind of approach. And I know the fourth one did try to do work on the story more than I would say two and three. First one, I think, had a good premise and everything. Um, but once I got characters I was not, you know, tied with or I didn't feel that kind of passion with, that's where I kind of lost it. And then I was like, I can't watch this because it wasn't favorable to me. This isn't something I enjoy. And if I don't enjoy something, I'm not going to go to the theater just as much as I'm a Transformers fan as everybody else. If they're, you know, right. But if I don't like something, I don't feel like I should have to go pay my money to get make a sequel that I'm not going to like either. If those people want to go up, by all means, go ahead. But to the people that complain afterwards, like, well, you already knew the movie going in that there's a chance of that. And if you're allowing a sequel because of all this money production that's going into, you know, all that, and then the money gets back to them and it goes double for their money and all that, you allow a sequel. You need to speak up then. And if you want to, you can do petitions if you like to. Does it work out? Well, you already know they're making five and six. Yeah, I already know that. Yeah, especially with the end of part four. I mean, they left... They, they left an opening. Optimus pretty much looked at the camera and says, I'll see you next movie, <laughs> you know, without actually I'll saying it. I'll get you, Optimus. Um, my whole thing, like... I don't have a problem. G1 was G1. Yeah. You know, Bay, Bay movie Transformers. I don't like calling them Bay Formers, but it's starting to stick. So that is what it is. I liked it. Um, I'll go ahead, since you didn't see it, I'll rate it. I'll give it two and a half out of four stars. You know, um, like I said, I, I liked it. There was a lot. There's some stuff I didn't like. It was very minor. And the stuff I didn't like would be me just being an asshole and just trying to nitpick for the sake of nitpicking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because, I mean, the only thing I heard that was the biggest consistent one is... Why was it so long? I think that was the only. That's thing people I... complaining because if it would have been a short movie, people would have been like, it should have been longer. No, the ones I talked to that were like saying they were entertained by the action. Um, I didn't even look at it. Like when I was watching it, I was not in the theater. Like, good God, this movie's long. It didn't. It just. I enjoyed it, so I was along for the ride. And I was when when I got out of the theater, I was like, oh shit, you know. But I wasn't like, good God, hurry up and finish. You know, there's some movies you sit through, you kind of like, okay, I've been sitting here, my ass is numb. You know, like yeah. No, I, I was I was good. Titanic. With it. <laughs> I didn't see that in the theater, man. I had to see that three or four times. <laughs> I got to lie. Um, my biggest pet peeve to end this whole thing is the ones that are so... And you, you're not, I'm not including you. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of people online, especially on these Transformer Facebook fan pages and these toy pages. They're just like, you know, these Transformers suck, or I'll never watch a Bay movie, or, you know, I won't give you my money. But they're the fuckers that are turning around and buying the Transformers for figures. You know, these are the guys that are like, I'll never, I'll never watch it. You're bullshitting. I'm calling you out now because if somebody gave you a free copy, you had nothing to do. If you're a hardcore fan, at one point or another, you're going to end up watching the movie anyway just to watch it. And I'm going to admit that because honestly, my girlfriend wants to see it. So I mean, I'm regardless of, it. like, you're like, I hate Michael Bay, I don't want to watch it. One day. I don't hate Michael Bay. You're gay or you're, you're, I, you're I have girl. No, I, See, the thing is, is like, the only thing I'll make fun of Michael Bay is basically, and I'm going to call you on this, is that basically at that same Because yeah, I'm sure he's watching. <laughs> no, I highly doubt it. If he does, I'll be shocked. Because actually... You never know, dude. I've been surprised about some of the Twitter followers we have. Like celebrities. I'm like, holy shit, they know who we are. But you saw about the Samsung conference. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, when he tried to explain something, he couldn't say anything good. And then, he, you know, he's like, he was all shocked. He, and flu he was fluttered. Flustered. And then, I can understand you're fluttered, but at the same time, 
when you say you can, you know, at, go on the go and ad lib everything, and you can't even do that, it makes me questionable about certain aspects of what you're trying to explain to me about this movie. Otherwise, I've liked his Bad Boy films. Yeah, I've Bad liked Boys other are things. Great. I mean, he's done good movies. It's like a hit or miss with Michael Bay. Right. That's that's my honest opinion. It's like you're either gonna like him, you're not gonna like him. You're gonna like some movies. You're not. Well, here's gonna the like thing. Him. Are you happy in general that we're getting Transformers movies at all? Because um, think about it, if he didn't step up to the plate, Spielberg always wanted to make these movies. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, it's just like okay, so who would have stepped up to the plate? Would have anybody stepped up? You never know. We might not. If if my, if I'm no, gonna say if it person. wasn't for Michael B- James Cameron, yeah, that's the only person. Yeah, I but I'm not gonna fucking wait 19 years <laughs> for him to make a sequel after Avatar. You know. <laughs> so my whole thing is, look, stop your bitching. Be glad that they even exist. If you don't want to watch them, fine. Don't watch them, but don't bash them if you're not going to watch them. And that's not just Transformers. That goes for anything. No, and, the, you know? and you're right about the Transformers. Is at least that it was a first approach to see where it can go and just see what can be done with special effects. And here's, here's also another thing, not to cut you off. Where was the Transformers franchise in general before that first movie came out? Honestly, it was still in the time of the Beast Wars and all it that. It was like in limbo. Like You had the Beast Wars, Beast Machine stuff in Armada, the 90s. No. You, no, Armada was early 2000s. Um, and then you had the, the, the Unicron trilogy, which yeah. they called it. But then you had Transformers Prime, which I believe came out right after the movie. Um, yes. Cause you I was... had the robots in the skies. But it's like, in general, Transformers wasn't as big as it was. You didn't see Transformers Robots in the Skies bed sheets. You didn't see Transformers uh, Optimus Prime Fire Engine Robots in the Skies Halloween costumes. And the one thing that I think fans should, should know is that from what I heard from a lot of people that did see the film, even though I was not going to be seeing this film in the theater... Which um, I recommend you do because, regardless, it still looks great on the big screen. Um, Just go to a matinee or something. <laughs> I'm going to probably see a cheap matinee if we do go. Um, but the one thing they did say is that they really did try to appease fans on some cases, so don't think he didn't listen to those notes. He's not a stupid man. He knows if he screws over the fans, nobody's going to watch his movies. And that means less money in his pocket. Uh, name alone, though. I mean, like, it's something can sell for the name alone. I, I'm not going to say that can't happen. But, and Transformers has a very well-known name worldwide. Oh, yeah. But it is what it is. Uh, if you've watched it and you liked the movie, whether you didn't like the movie, comment, let us know what you thought, uh, whether you agree with him or whether you agree with me, whatever, you got your own opinion, let us know. It's all about the fan interaction. So, join us next week when we're still going to be sitting here in our same stanky clothes. We're going to be discussing some of the uh, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive announced for this year. So, until next week, I'm Junior Ruiz. And this is Edric Fong saying good night. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.